Good morning. How are we today? Well, we all made it here went through the snow and the ice, didn't we? <laughs> well, we want to welcome you today to our worship. Uh, my name is Trish Miller, and I'm a lay servant of St. Paul United Methodist Church, and I'm glad you're able to join with us here in person and online. And uh, you may even be in the parking lot. I hope not because it's cold. I hope you're inside. Today we're excited to have Reverend Treva Mills here. She's going to be leading worship for us today. And we just give thanks that we have this day and we can be together and we can worship together as one body. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for letting us be here today. And as we begin our service, let your Holy Spirit fill this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing. dark you have 
Good morning. And what a beautiful day it turned out to be. I think we were all expecting ice and snow, and I've already heard some grandchildren are disappointed they couldn't sled. May get that later. But what a beautiful day God has given us, and what a wonderful day to come together and worship. I'm Treva Mills. Um, don't worry, Pastor Clefton will be back next week. So this is, uh, I am humbled to have this on opportunity, and it's always a blessing to come together and worship. We welcome you if you're here with us today, or as Trish said, wherever you may be. If there are guests here today, we certainly welcome you. Um, there is a coffee mug to give you, to welcome you, to remind us of you. Uh, you can, we welcome you if you're online. If you'd like to go online and sign our attendance, you may do that. Anyway, we'd like to welcome all the children to come up. And Sister Trish has a sermon for you. My goodness. Oh, we have any other children who'd like to come up? Well, I had little boys at one time, but they grew up. Hi. Y'all doing okay today? You all right? Would you do me a favor and come over here? I want everybody to see you. Could you sit right there? Everybody see these nice looking young men? Aren't we proud of them? Yes. I have some things today. I even have some things called a cheat sheet. Something I call a cheat sheet. Do you know what that is? Well, we won't tell you what it is right now. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you today. You mind if I sit here? Okay. Am I far enough away? Okay. I want you to be comfortable. Let me get my little cheat sheet here. One thing I want to show you is three books. Hmm. You know what this one is? It's what? Bible. Did y'all hear that? It's a Bible. Hmm. Who do you think wrote that book? Oh, he said God. What kind of answer? Do y'all like that answer? Amen? Inspired by God, yes. Well, several people wrote that book because there's a lot of books in that Bible. And it's filled with stories. Have y'all been doing stories with Miss Amy and in class and at home? I have too, and I'm not even a kid anymore. But I'm enjoying it. Now, many were written, many of these books were written by people who wanted to share their stories with people like you and me. Some were written by people that were actually there and experienced the stories. And this Bible is full of those stories. And what do we do when we read them? We learn from them, right? Guess what? I have another book. May I show it to you? Is it a pretty book? It has kids on it, doesn't it? You want me to tell you what the title is? Come over and tell them what the title is. Somewhere Among the Stars. Yes, Somewhere Among the Stars and Snowflakes. And you see, there's a lot of children's faces on there. And these faces are children uh, from everywhere around the world. You know who wrote this book? I did. And guess who inspired this? This book was inspired by some things that happened in my life. But God gave me the words to say and put in this book. Now I have another book. 
Let me show the audience so they can see. Can you see it? Okay. It's called Love You Forever. And I want to tell you just a little tiny bit about this one. It's about this woman who had a little boy. And she loved that little boy so much. And she would sing to that little boy. Now, guess what happened to that little boy? He grew up. Can you imagine that? That little boy grew up. That's what happens. But she loved him anyway forever. Forever. And what I like the best about this story is when that little boy grew up and he became a man, he told his mother he would love him have, love her forever. Now, can anyone tell you how that relates to, to God? Yes, that's the best answer ever. God loves us and he will love us forever. So that's something that we want to remember and, and keep in our hearts. All three of these books... I believe God spoke to the people who wrote them so they could share their stories. Don't you? I do too. So just remember, no matter what happens in life, that God will always love you. I brought a little gift today, and I'm going to actually give it to Miss Amy. But what it is, um, there are little journals and there's stickers in there and pens in there and what I would like for you to do is start your story even if you don't write you can draw pictures and you can use stickers but you can start writing your story to share with people out there in the world just like the people that wrote these books. You have any questions? May we pray for you? All right, let's bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you so much for these children and all of the children in the world. We know they are precious to you. May we, as your church and their church family, show them our love by encouraging them and supporting them as they live their journey and as they live out their lives. Lead and guide and inspire them as they journey and as they learn more about you and the amazing love you will always have for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you all so much for coming up. And if you will grab that bag and give to, to Miss Amy, she will distribute those later. And we thank you so much for coming. And thank you all. That's my favorite story. We come to our time of our worship through giving. We have many ways you can give. Uh, you may give online if you wish or contact the church office. But this is one of the many ways that we truly worship God. We know that everything we have comes from God. And we come to this time to get back. Our offerings are used for outreach within our community and the world. This time if the ushers will come forward please. Let us pray. Most gracious God, Lord, we thank you for all that we have, and we know that all we have and all that we are comes from you. Heavenly Father, we come at this time with a portion of that which you have 
blessed us with. We ask that you take these gifts, that you bless them, that you use them for your work as you will. In Christ's name, amen. Why are you striving these days? And why are you trying to earn grace? And why are you crying? Let me lift up your face. Just don't turn away. Why are you looking for love? Why are you still searching as if I'm not enough? To where will you go, child? Tell me where will you run? To where will you run? Cause I'll be by your side. Let us remain standing. the 
Our scripture reading today comes from 
1 Kings chapter 11, 26 through 30, but we're going to have a little extra scripture here. And I will try not to mess up the names too bad. Also, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, rebelled against the king. He was one of Solomon's officials, an Ephraimite from Zeredah, and his mother was a widow named Zerari. Here is the account of how he rebelled against the king. Solomon had built the terraces and had filled in the gap in the wall of the city of David, his father. Now Jeroboam was a man of standing, and when Solomon saw how well the young man did his work, he put him in charge of the whole labor force of the tribes of Joseph. And about that time, Jeroboam was going out of Jerusalem, and Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh, met him on the way, wearing a new cloak. The two of them were alone out in the country, and Ahijah took hold of the new cloak he was wearing and tore it into 12 pieces. Verse 38 says, If you listen to what I tell you and follow my ways and do whatever I consider to be right, and if you obey my decrees and commands as my servant David did, then I will always be with you. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you, Trish. I want to ask you a question today, and you're welcome to raise your hand. Answer it out loud if you want. How many of us like to do things our way? All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, when faced with a decision or a task, do we go, you know what, my way is the best way? Do we not think that? I'm going to do it my way. Yeah, we'll do it my way. Does that always work for you? Do we ever stop and give consideration that another person's idea might be better? We always do that, right? Might that person actually have a better way of doing something? Good, now y'all tell the truth. Even if we've done the task over and over in our lives, is maybe there not room for improvement through a different way? Or something new to be learned about it? So what is the best way? You know, the answer is very simple. And I could end the sermon right now and let all of you go home, but we're not going to do that. It's very simple. It's God's way. And as we've studied through the story, haven't we seen time and time and time? If they had just done it God's way, it may have been differently. So do we stop and ask, is my way God's way? How often do we stop before we have to make that decision, or we take up that task and say, God, I need direction. Okay, God, this is my idea, but is this what you would have me do? And then, do we follow God's direction? You know, your way may be very good, but if it does not line up with God's way, Very simply put, it's the wrong way. And that's all there is to it on that. 
as we studied throughout the Old Testament. And we saw these people over and over making decisions. We have seen God come to them in visions, speak directly through, to them through prophets, everything else. And we have seen the dire consequences of what happens when we do not follow God's direction. Is it any different today? Is it any different with each one of us? Pastor Clefton brought up one of the Proverbs last week, and I think this is something you can use right then when you are taking up a task or you're needing to make that decision or you're needing to know what way is the right way. And it says, trust in the Lord. What a concept. With all your heart, not just part of it, all of your heart, do not depend on your own understanding. Seek the will in all you do, in all. No matter how small, no matter how big. And God will show you which path to take. Well, let's look at this story we had to read for this week. Okay. Jeroboam was given specific instructions. And he was also given a blessing by God through the prophet Ahijah on how to reign over the northern tribes. As Trish read in the scripture, verse 38 in Kings 11 tells us, if you listen, do we always listen? To what I tell you and you follow my ways and do whatever I consider to be right. It's not that hard, people very specific and if you obey my decrees and my commands as my servant David did then I will always be with you there's that promise God promises to always be with us and for that we give thanks and praise and if and I will establish this was for Jeroboam, an enduring dynasty for you as I did for David, and I will give Israel to you. How hard is that? It's right there. One, two, three, maybe four steps. That's all you got to do. But why is it so hard for us human beings to do? For God's creation to do? All Jeroboam had to do was to follow that instruction, to rule the way God wanted him to rule, to have a great kingdom. However, he chose to go his own way after receiving bad advice. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. You've got to be careful about that too. Okay, Jeroboam feared losing power, and he feared that if his people went back to Jerusalem to worship, where that was, they were supposed to go there anyway, they might stay there and give allegiance to Rehoboam. And then they might even kill Jeroboam. Talk about insecurity problems. So Jeroboam's way was to set up his own worship centers with golden calves. Well, now that never happened before, did it? And we saw how that worked out, but still, he does this. He sets up these golden calves, and then he starts appointing all sorts of people to be priests, which went totally against what God said. They weren't from the tribes of Levi. They, hey, anybody can do it. This was not God's way. But Jeroboam had just thrown aside the instructions of God 
that he had been specifically told. You know, we have to listen when God is speaking to us. We must do what God considers to be right. We must obey. That's what the word tells us. That's what God tells us throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament. We are told, be in obedience to God. Now, occasionally, some of us, perhaps not all of us, need advice. Before we venture upon a new endeavor. So to, to whom do you go? Let's look at Ray Bohm for a minute. He had the opportunity to be a great king, just like those before him. They had the opportunity. And he had the example of his grandfather, David. He had the example of, from Solomon, his father, as to what worked and as to what did not work. Okay, well, being a new king, he, he made a good choice in seeking out advice. So he went to the elders who had advised his father. After all, they had experience. They had wisdom. Good place to go. But he didn't necessarily like their advice. You know, and I'm wondering if in the scripture, the elders tell him, if you will serve, if you will do this. Well, not everybody wants to do that. But they told him, serve the people. Give them a favorable answer. Well, whatever reason, Rehoboam didn't like that. So he sought the advice of his buddies. He goes to his peers. Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking, okay, he probably thought, you know what? They're going to tell me what I want to know, what I want to hear. Well, they did. And they said, you know, your dad really put some heavy burdens on these people. And he was very harsh with them. Well, you want to rule over them? Then you need to be even harsher than what he was. Put heavier burdens on them. But the point, the people had had it with that. So the kingdom split in two, which was part of God's plan. You know, when we follow bad advice, advice that is not in line with God's way, there are dire consequences. We have to carefully assess the advice we're given. We need to evaluate the advice. Ask ourselves, is it realistic? Is it workable? Is it for the good of all? Not just for ourselves. Because it can be very easy for us to fall in that trap. And get to thinking, okay, well, it's good for me. It's got to be good for them. And we have to remember, if it is not in line with biblical principles and consistent with God's standards, hmm, it's not good advice. Now, most of the kings who followed Rehoboam and Jeroboam did evil, as it states over and over in Scripture, and as we read in our book, the story. But there were a few who were considered good kings. One of them was Asa. 
And Asa began to rule over Judah, the southern kingdom, in the year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel, the northern kingdom. And in 1 Kings 15, verse 9, we read that Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight as his ancestor David had done. And Asa's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord through light, throughout his life. You know, when I read that in Scripture, I took a breath and thought, Oh, great, finally! Someone who is going to follow God. But we find later on that wasn't necessarily true. However, Asa went in and cleaned the entire land of Judah of its idols. Okay, that was a great thing. He even removed his grandmother, Mecca, from her position of queen mother because of her pagan worship. Can you imagine living your life so badly that your grandkids kick you out? You know, that's pretty bad. Anyway, Asa does very well his first ten years. He obeyed God, and he sought God first. And I think that's one of the key things about Asa that we read, is he sought God first. And we see that throughout his reign... Even during times of battle. But then came a time, and Asa kind of panicked. When things between Asa and King Basha of the northern kingdom took an ugly turn, Asa didn't seek God first. Big mistake. He came up with this way, and he thought, okay, this will this work. It's quick. It'll work. We'll get this over with. I know what I'm doing. I don't have to ask God. I'll talk to him later. So Asa bribed King Ben-Hadad of Aram to break his alliance with King Basha. Now, this plan worked brilliantly. All is well. No, it's not, because that was not God's way. Asa should have gone to God first, just like he did any other time, and go, okay, I'm thinking of doing it like this. What do you think? Does this line up with your way? Is this how you want me to do it? But that's not what he did. Well, God sends a prophet, Hanani, to confront Asa about his sin, about this mistake he made. And all Asa has to do is repent to God. Remember how David would do that? That's why David was declared righteous in the eyes of God, because he truly did confess his sins. You know what? Those are three of the hardest words for us to say. I was wrong. And it's really hard to go to God. But that's what we are to do. We are to humble ourselves before God and confess our sins and remember that he is a God of love and mercy. And the scriptures tell us that if we will humble ourselves and confess our sins... He is quick and just to forgive us our sins. But I didn't want to do that. What does he do? He gets all upset. He flies into this rage. And he jailed that prophet. And then he took it out on the people. And throughout his life, He held stubbornly on to his failure until his time of death. When he left this earth, it was still up there. Nope, not going to repent to God. 
okay, that kind of scares me. I think if I'm going to go meet God face to face, I, you know, I want to make sure all this is good. But that's not what he did. But you know, we all fail to follow God at times. But there again, if we truly humble ourselves, and that's not necessarily something we like to do, and truly repent and confess, God is a God of mercy, and he does forgive us. No matter what way, your way or others' way, If it's not God's way, it's the wrong way because God's way is always the right way. We're told in Isaiah that the Lord says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. We can't even conceive the goodness of God's way. That's why we have to go to God first. I think our intention is to follow God's way, but we don't always carry through. But God gives us the ability to seek God's guidance in so many ways. Seek it through prayer, consistent prayer, open prayer, a continual prayer. And then we have to be still and listen. Scripture also tells us to seek the Lord with all your heart. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. Lead me along the right path. Wait patiently for the Lord. Do you ever go in and, okay, Lord, got to do this. What would you have me do? You walk to the other room. Well, you haven't answered yet, so I guess I'll go ahead and do it my way. You have to be patient. Be brave and courageous. There are decisions in life we don't like to have to make. And those are times we definitely need to rely on God. God will tell you the way. He'll show you the way. And he'll tell you what is required. He's not going to put something up on you that he will not provide a way for you to do it. We go all the way back to Deuteronomy, and God was talking about this. And he told Israel, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Okay, people sitting in St. Paul United Methodist Church today, those listening, what does the Lord require of you? It's no different than what it was when it was written in Deuteronomy. He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and you live in a way that pleases him. And love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. And you must always, oh, here's that word, obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your, for your own good. God's not giving us these rules and regulations and guidance because God is just some big controlling God. He's doing it out of love. Because he loves you, each and every one of us. 
each and every person in the world. That's a whole different sermon. And the Lord has told you what is good. One of my favorite scriptures, Micah 6 and 8. And this is what he requires of you. Do what is right. In uh, Sunday school, we've talked about this a lot. You do what is right. Then you do the next right thing. So simple, folks. Love mercy. And walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. Loving, merciful God, we thank you that you are our God, our heavenly parent, that we thank you for your love. We thank you that you are a God of mercy. Oh my, what mercy. We thank you that you give us direction, that you show us the way. And Lord, we ask, help us, Lord, to open up our hearts and minds and listen for your direction and to follow in your way, Lord. And in Jesus' name, we give you all the glory and the praise that is yours. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us today in worship, and I want to especially thank Reverend Treva for leading us in worship today and for bringing the message. Uh, if you noticed in your flyer, you have some fellowship events. Be sure to go over them, look through them, see what you might be interested in doing or helping out with. Uh, you're also invited to celebrate Holy Communion. It has already been blessed, uh, which will be served in the chapel immediately following uh, our service. So be sure that, that you work together with us and with our church families. There's a lot of us that are going through uh, many things and we just, we just need to all join together as a family and love one another, pray for one another, and support one another. And that means, part, partly that means uh, being a part of uh, these activities and events that we have going on in our, our church. So let us gather together as we close our service. It's been a blessing to be with you this morning. Thank you for being here. and. Let us receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you all and have a blessed day and a blessed week.